So today we have a nice geometrical theorem. This theorem was given by Euler and it is known as the Euler's theorem in geometry. We take a circle, now we inscribe a triangle inside this circle and label its corner as A, B, C. Now we inscribe a circle inside this triangle. Now the circle in which the triangle is inscribed is known as the circumcircle and the circle which is inscribed inside the triangle is known as the incircle. Now let the center of the incircle be equals to i and the center of the circumcircle be equals to o. Now let the distance between the centers be equals to a variable d. Now we will take the radius of the circumcircle as a variable k and radius of the incircle as a variable r. Now Euler gave a nice relation between d, k and r that is d square would always be equals to k square minus 2 times k times r. So this is Anmol Misha and now let us see the solution. How can we prove this particular theorem? So first of all, we will utilize the fact that the blue circle is the in circle. This means the point x, y and z are tangent points. So when we will draw radius to these three particular points, the angle form over there would be 90 degree. Now we will draw two line segment. The first one will join the points B, I and the second one will join the points A, I. Now we can clearly say that these two triangles are congruent to each other because of the right angle hypotenuse side, therefore rest of the things between them become equal. So this and this angle become equal and let it be equals to a variable beta. Now similarly these two triangles are congruent, therefore these two angles become equal and let it be equals to a variable theta. Now we will extend the line segment BI as a straight line, so it intersect the circumcircle at point M. Now we will draw a line segment joining the points AM and CM. Now we will draw a line segment from point M that passes through the point O and intersect the circumcircle at point N. Now you can note over here that MN is the diameter for this circumcircle. Therefore the length of MN is going to be equals to 2 times K. Now we will join the points AN with a line segment. Now we know the theorem that angle inscribed inside a semicircle is always 90 degree. So as MN is the diameter, angle MAN is going to be 90 degree. Now we also know this particular theorem that the angle subtended by the same chord in the same segment is always equal. So we will take the common chord as MA. Therefore the angle MBA equals to angle MNA. And as MBA is already having a value beta, Therefore, M and A would also have a value equals to beta. Now, when we observe this diagram carefully, we can clearly say that the triangle BXI is similar to the triangle NAM by the angle-angle property. One of the common angle is beta and other common angle is 90 degree. Now, as two triangles are similar, ratio of their sides would be equal. Therefore, BX upon NA equals to XI upon AM equals to BI upon NM. Now out of this we are going to compare the middle ratio with the last one. Now we can clearly see that xi is the radius for this in circle therefore it would have a value equals to r divided by am as it is equals to bi as it is. Now as I told you that nm is the diameter for the circumcircle therefore it is going to have a length 2 times k. Now when we will do cross multiplication we will get 2 times k times r equals to bi into am. So here we have got a first important equation. Okay, now again remember the theorem that angle subtended by the same chord in the same segment is equal. So we are going to take the common chord as MC. Therefore the angle MBC is going to be equals to angle MAC. MBC is already having a value beta. Therefore the angle MAC would also have a value beta. Okay, now look in this triangle IBA. The interior two angles are theta and beta. And as BM is a straight line, the angle AIM is going to be equals to theta plus beta because of the exterior angle property. Now we can clearly see that angle MAI is also theta plus beta and angle MIA is also theta plus beta. Therefore the respective side becomes equal that is AM equals to IM. Now in the first equation that is 2 times K times R equals to BI into AM. We can replace AM with its new value that is going to be equals to MI. So now the first equation will turn out to be 2 times K times R equals to BI into MI. So here we have just modified the first equation. 
So here I have just redrawn the diagram and in this I will only keep the line segment BM. Now I will draw a line segment such that it passes through the point I and O and intersect the circumcircle at point P and Q. Now let us mark the length of the line segment. So OQ is radius of the circumcircle, hence it will have a length equals to K. We will take the length of OI as a variable equals to D. Now OP is having a length K, OI is having a length D, therefore IP is going to have a length K minus D. And we can also say that IQ is going to have a length K plus D. So here I have just cleared the diagram a little bit more. So we can clearly see two chords that are intersecting inside a circle. So here we are going to use the intersecting chord theorem. So now as per the intersecting chord theorem, BI into MI is going to be equals to K minus D into K plus D. This means BI into MI is going to be equals to K square minus D square. Now remember this equation and the older equation that 2KR equals to BI into MI. So when we will compare these two equations, we will get 2 times K times R equals to K square minus D square. Now when we will adjust the terms in this particular equation, we will get d square equals to k square minus 2 times k times r and that's the answer that we were looking for.